Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to BMMP 2543 Material Selection. So today I'll be talking about understanding materials charts and indices. For today's learning outcome, okay, we want to in the end generating, our aim is to generate the material property chart. So before we do that, we need to understand translating information that we got and from the abstract format into more specific uh, information, specific requirements and parameters. And from those specific material uh, to specific, we generate the translation table. After generating the translation table, then we can generate the material index and finally getting the generating the material property chart. So translating information is that first we need to understand the, the particular product. Because a certain product is being designed in a particular way, so we need to understand whether it's uh, what are the important materials, uh, processing, uh, what are the economic and aesthetic, aesthetic decisions that are required and understanding this decision helps us in designing and customizing the, the design for the product itself. We have to look for keywords such as must or must not, specified or specific. This is important that to, make, to make sure that we do not miss out on important information uh, such as a, a constraint and uh, the, the few variables that we have that are to be considered. So before we start, first we have to analyze the product. What does it do? The function. What are its limitations, its constraints? What does it need to achieve, the objective? What are the options that you have? We need the few variables. All these questions and more need to be asked before we can further analyze the product. So uh, as well as we consider the mechanical, electrical, and thermal requirements, we have to consider the economics, the user friendly, it's uh, marketing and even in recent years now uh, towards people more concerned with the environmental impact of a product at okay, the, end, the end of life cycle. So in product analysis, we start by considering the whole system. Okay, we need to understand uh, the various materials and the processes that uh, use of the product and we need to pull it apart and think about each component as well. And from there, we can analyze in, in more detail and draft a more design specification or uh, drafting the translation table. One example is that of a scissors. Okay, this is an example that the information uh, sort of uh, have been given uh, in real uh, information. Okay, you want to the material to require uh, office scissors. They've, it's been informed that the paper is an abrasive material. And, and the scissors sometimes encounter hard objects like staples or paper clips. And the function, we need to list the function and constraints, set the objective to minimize cost, and the fee variable as the choice of material. So how do we generate the translation table from the information given? First, the function as the scissors. The consist has been given as because paper is an abrasive material, then uh, we Consider the paper, uh, we say the the function as scissors. The constraint we have high hardness, high toughness, wear resistance, and able to forge. What are these mean that high hardness because the material uh, that is need to, to cut, which is paper, is an abrasive material. Same thing as when we use a cutting tool as in a milling machine or uh, in, the, uh, in the lift machine, the material needs to be able to cut the surface of the material that is being, uh, that is being encountered. So that's why it, has, it must have a high surface hardness. Toughness meaning that it, because of it has to be encounter uh, other objects, uh, metallic objects that uh, could be at the same hardness as it is at the surface or almost the same uh, strength so that it must have high toughness property so that it doesn't easily damage and wear resistance so that it can be used uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in, in further life cycle able to be forged because of it because the scissor itself uh, must be uh, forged with a handle and we set the objective as uh, minimize material cost as being set uh, in the uh, in the text and finally, we set the objective with the, uh, the free variable with the choice of materials. Another example here, we it's just uh, the text given uh, 
with regarding a story sheeter. It doesn't say any specific words, any specific uh, uh, or uh, bluntly say on how, uh, what are the objective or what are the, the few variables. So th this example is that a story sheeter captures heat over a period of time, then releases it usually to an airstream when required. Those for domestic heating store solar energy or energy from cheap off-peak electricity and release it slowly during the cold part of the day. Those for research release the heat to a supersonic airstream to test system behavior in supersonic flight. What is a good material for the core of a compact storage material capable of temperatures up to 120 degrees centigrade? And the key word one is the core of a compact storage material. So when we translate the information with the, those abstract information towards a uh, more specific and translate in our translation table, the function would be the core for compact storage heater. The concept it must has a maximum service temperature, which is Tmax more than 120 degrees centigrade. And it must have high heat capacity per volume, meaning because of its compact size, okay, it must have able to store uh, a lot of energy of heat, okay, with its uh, small volume. Okay, a small uh, volume of area, uh, small volume uh, of, of the device. Next is minimizing the material cost per unit volume, meaning because of this uh, small uh, dimension, minimizing the material that we uh, cost that we uh, for daily because of daily usage or because of uh, consuming usage. So the few variable would be the choice of materials. Okay. Next, how we device. We already talked about uh, generating translation table from uh, abstract information. That's how we devise the material index from the, the uh, translation table that we uh, generated with the specific information gathered from the abstract information. So before we begin, we must ensure that all of the information will be already translated to the translation table. So we start with the, the equation by starting with the objective. And we consider the few variables that could be included in the material choice. If not, we consider the constraints. So this example is that for a cylindrical tension tire rod that will be unit actually loaded with force F, it has a specific length L and it must not fail when applied with force F. The design requests that the rod must be lightweight and open to suggestion of materials. So all this is information how we translate to the translation table. The function is the it's a rod, the constraint with the length L specified, and must not fail with applied load F. The objective is that is mass M is must be minimized, and the few variables are this are the choice of materials. We start first with the requirement, which is the objective of the lightweight cylindrical rod. The equation for mass is M equals to density times volume. And the volume equation we, we substitute as the equation for area times length. And then we know that the applied tensile load F must not exceed the materials sigma Y or yield strength. So therefore, the, the force over here must not or equal to the sigma Y or yield strength. So rearranging equation 2 will give us area equals to force over sigma yield. So when we insert equation 2 into equation 1, we we'll get M equals force times length times the density over sigma yield. So the equation 3 is the performance function P, where load F is the function requirement, length L is the geometric parameter, and density over sigma yield or yield strength is the material index or the material properties M. So since we have defined the material index uh, density over sigma yield or yield strength, in order to fulfill the requirement of equation 3, this value must be as minimal as possible. Okay, so that the equation for the mass must be as low as possible. In practice, it is preferable to find the maximum value. So therefore, we, when we find the lightest rod, we can invert the material index becoming the yield strength over density. And since the, the rod must not fail with the applied load, a more precise changing the symbol is the yield strength to E, which is the modulus of elasticity or stiffness. E is a material's ability to resist deformation when load is applied and is then sloped in a stress-strain curve. And since E equals to yield strength over 
a strain. Therefore, the material index is now M equals to E over rho, which we substitute inside the equation, the previous equation. So then we can generate the material selection chart or the material property chart, which we uh, act the y axis as the Young's modulus and the x axis with the density. Okay, we this uh, generate using the CES EduPack uh, software. So, and then we can uh, have the information of different uh, category of technical ceramics, metals and alloys, natural materials, and foam. So, next I'll be talking about uh, the Young's modulus based density chart, which uh, is an important chart for deflection limited design and when weight is also important. Okay, so this is an example that uh, taken from the textbook material selection and mechanical design. And if I divide this uh, chart into four quadrants, okay, the upper left side materials are light and steel because of its high Young's modulus and low density material on the lower right, on, excuse me, lower left corner, materials that are light and soft, meaning that it has low density and lower Young's modulus. Material on the lower right corner would have the characteristic of heavy because of its high density and soft because of its lower Young's modulus. While material on the upper right side would have very would be very heavy because of its high density and so very stiff because of its high Young's modulus. So if you look closely, when uh, you, you see in the And finally, if you look closely at the back of the chart here, you see these dotted lines. These dotted lines are called the contour line. Okay, and uh, also in the chart, it has different contour line for different characteristic or different material index. Uh, this one for E uh, cube root with uh, over density, and this E square root over density, and this one is E density over density. So what are the true meaning of those selection lines and contour lines on the material property chart? So the selection contour lines of slope 1, we see that from the uh, from the background of the chart. The meaning of the y-intercept we uh, explain and also what are the selection contour lines of any gradient equals to 1 uh, or more than 1 or less than 1. So if we generate the bubble chart in the in our CS Edipack software, okay, we'll see that these are the contour lines for slope one. Okay, when we key in as the guideline, uh, when we choose in the software, we have the, the guideline. These are the guidelines showing for uh, for slope one. And what is the meaning of the physical intercept in, uh, of increasing intercept? Okay. So if you see here, these dotted lines, increasing dotted lines, these are lines of materials that fulfill the, the material index of E over rho, okay, which is the slope of one. All these, all these, uh, the same materials that in, that been intersect with this line have the same characteristic of the Young modulus over density, okay. And the M itself is the cause as the Y intercept. This is the intercept for the material index. So with increasing, meaning that with the increasing of the line, it shows that we, the materials are more stiff over density. Okay, meaning that over uh, it has a more uh, specific uh, specific stiffness with increasing value. So contour and selection line, the mass for the case of linear relationship. So how do we generate the, the slope or the contour line? We know that index equals to Young's modulus over density. M depends on the imposed functional relationship between the density, uh, density and Young's modulus. And in this case, linear. So how do we uh, solve the equation? 
Okay, we know that uh, E is equals to M, which is the vertical index times density, which we equate as the Y equals F function of X. So when we change to a, a straight line, okay, we take the log of the equation. We change as log E equals to log density plus log M. So the equation is considered the same as the linear equation, which is Y equals MX plus H with uh, M as the slope and the intercept is the log of the material index. So this is an example of the CA screenshot for Young's modulus over density. This is the selection slope 1 of M equals Young's modulus over density. And this is slope 1 we get here as the intercept M equals to M equals 0, 0, 7, 1. And this is an example of the material density, material property chart generated from the CS software, which is for the Young's modulus over density. This is the slope contour slope line of M equals to Young's modulus over density with the slope of 1. And slope 1 here, the intercept is shown here in the software, which is M equals to. 0.00715 gigapascal over kilogram. So the contour lines are or non-linear relationships. Okay, for example, uh, m equals to if we get the equation of a square root of density of Young's modulus over density, then when we arrange it, rearrange it, the square root of the Young's modulus equals to m times rho or e equals to squared m and squared rho. So taking the logs, we have log e equals to 2 log rho plus log m squared. The equation of a straight line slope 2 mean with the intercept log of m squared. So if we generate the index with m equals to square root e over rho and rearranging it, with E equals to M times rho squared. Okay. If we generate the scales using the Y axis with the Young's modulus and the X axis with the density, if M equals to 100, the, value, the, the contour line would be equals to something like this. E equals to 100 rho squared. But if the M is equal to 10, then we have a more logarithmic scale. So this shows that the graph increasing it in this direction okay, for m equals to square root e over rho. So if we take the log, log e equals to 2 log rho plus log m squared, we will have this characteristic of the equation and the material property chart with the, a more linear relationship. Okay. All this contour line slope of slope 2. And the direction of the increasing uh, material index is in this direction as opposed to a, a, a logarithmic, logarithmic uh, uh, characteristic. This is with the intercept of log e equals to 2 log rho plus log 10 squared equals to then the h is the log 100 which is at 2 and the software reads as m equals to 10 because of a log scale here the software reads as m at 1 and here the software reads the m equals to 100 this is an example screenshot that I taken from the CS Edupack software this is the contour line of slope 2 which is the material index E equals to square root E over rho. So from here we get the material index M or the intercept at 0 0.0019 on the value. Next is the strength versus density chart, which is chart for yield limit design and when weight and initial forces are important. Okay. So on the y-axis is the strength, failure strength. 
and on the x-axis is the density and if we divide again into four quadrant materials on the upper left are light and strong which is have lower density and higher strength materials on the lower left would be light and soft because of its lower strength and lower density materials on the lower right are heavy and soft because of its uh, higher density and lower strength and material on the upper right would be characteristic of material of being heavy and strong because of its higher strength and higher density but strength for all materials are not the same okay ceramics is not the same uh, strength characteristic as composite it is not the same strength of characteristic with metal it is not the same characteristic of uh, with polymers for ceramic we call it as fractional strength because ceramics are stronger fragile and weaker in tension for metal we call it as gear strength because metals are uh, in application wise is more uh, they are more in a, a unique actual uh, load uh, application and for polymers in as in in its rupture strength next i'll be talking about the young modulus versus strength chart which is one of the most useful material property charts okay so the y-axis again the young modulus and the x-axis with the strength so if we divide with the four quadrant materials on the upper right side are materials that are stiff and strong materials on the upper left side would be the materials that are yield before buckling meaning that it experience yielding before it fails materials on the upper right materials that are buckled that means fails before it yields because of its lower young modulus but higher strength and we see that the bubbles in the young modulus are narrowing because of its uh, characteristic of the strength different material strength at the same uh, young modulus this and then these are the selection line for different uh, shape for tie rod uh, for beam and for a panel and these are the contours for that's contour selection uh, with uh, slope one And since we know Hooke's law at yield is equal to yield stress equals to Young's modulus times the elastic strain, or when we rearrange it as the elastic strain equals to yield stress over modulus of elasticity. So all this value of the contour line is actually the yield strain. Next, I'll be talking about the specific stiffness versus specific strength. Okay, chart. It's also a very useful chart and if we divide this uh, chart into four quadrant okay materials on the upper right side are materials that are stiff because of its high specific modulus it is strong because of its high specific strength and also it is light because of its lower because of both are the, the stiffness and the strength have been divided with the density and materials on the upper left um, generally materials that experience yielding because of its high stiffness before it buckles or before it fails and materials that are on the lower right materials that experience buckling before yielding meaning that it experience uh, failure first without yielding so that is all thank you very much for your attention today okay i hope uh, you gained uh, knowledge on the uh, devising the, the material uh, indices uh, starting of course with the translation table getting generating specific information from the abstract information and then devising the material index and from the material index you devise the material property chart with its contour lines and its intercept so thank you very much for your attention and i hope you gained uh, uh, a lot with me today and if you have any questions you can just post in the video comment or using our microsoft teams and please make sure you subscribe to the channel and also like the video and thank you very much assalamualaikum and have a good day